This edition of the Ridley Report is brought to you by MindThings.com. This gives a sense of how much, again, we are uh, predominantly relating or relying upon incarceration as a criminal justice mechanism. So in different countries, we rely differently on um, probation, parole, uh, fines and sanctions and community service programs, the United States has really increased the significant proportion with, with which they dole out um, incarceral sentences. This gives a, a, a vision of the breakdown in expenditures that uh, the criminal justice system has had. So again, proportionately speaking, we're spending a lot more on corrections than, say, our judicial process or our policing services. I'm taping again. Uh, Chief Mark, can I express some concern to you with regard to what happened to Mike Tyner uh, about uh, six months ago, the man who had the... the, I'm, not the gonna, bar I'm not gonna talk about that. Oh, well, I'm gonna ask about it. At first glance, and I know and realize that no one here, or most people here, tend to dislike the police, but as far as a trade-off between cops on the street versus uh, wardens running jail facilities, you'd, you'd rather deter crime from ever happening than have lots of crime that's, that's being uh, retributed. So it, it, even, on the, even if we assume that our police system was purely functional, it seems that our balance of paying between police and punishment is out of whack. This one might be difficult to see, but this is the most, uh, I would say, disconcerting from a free market perspective correlation. This is a, an economic regression taken from an article by Ezra Klein, um, no, no friend to free markets per se. But um, what he did was he took the economic freedom index compiled by the Cato Institute, and he correlated it with po prison population. And what I think is, is tragic here is that a lot, of, a lot of neoclassical analysis in contemporary economics lends itself to this argument that capitalism and mass incarceration go hand in hand. And the reason for that is because there's this literature called self-enforcing exchange in economics. And it's asking critically, well, how can we get individuals to trade with one another, but without uh, an invisible boogeyman to, to punish people who break those contracts? Um, and the conclusions are that in small communities, say like Porkfest, for example, reputation does a lot of heavy lifting. You can shun people. You can tell them that you won't do business with them anymore. You can uh, sully their reputation. You can tell people about their bad experience. But those types of strategies don't tend to work well in Manhattan um, or in large scale, what are called anonymous market exchanges. And so one of the new institutional insights are say, is saying that the, the way in which you can do banking at an international level, right? I, I can take money out of my bank account. I can travel halfway around the world, start up a new bank account and have full faith and confidence that my money will be there, uh, capable for me to use and rely upon is very remarkable in human history. Like you used to not eat food that someone who you weren't related to would make for you because they could poison you, so to speak. Um, the, the, the way in which we rely upon the, the productive efforts of strangers in our daily lives is remarkable. And the way in which the neoclassical analysis interprets this is that it's a consequence of how functional and useful our formal law enforcement is. Like, if you're going to have a bigger and bigger and bigger growing market uh, anonymous exchange environment, like globalization, you're going to need bigger, 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 more anonymous and more external and formalized uh, contract enforcement and law enforcement mechanisms. Um, I want to suggest that there's a problem in this analysis, that we often overly discount the negative social effects involved with mass incarceration. And this is in large part a consequence of overly looking at this narrow period of history from the Enlightenment to today and only understanding that incarceration in that form of isolation and individualized punishments is a relatively new phenomenon. But instead, if we defined incarceration as the systematic uh, bondage of human beings, we would have to recognize that this practice is a lot older and has a lot more patternistic results on uh, the stability of society and governmental forms that we can recognize.
Is that why you're standing in front of me to block it? No. No? Okay. You just can't come to the checkpoint. Like on this line right here, you can't come there. All right. Have you played your fill of pro-government video games? Mine. Things.com. Could be the solution. It's free, imaginative, and you can play it entirely in your web browser. Recolonize the smothered earth. Dig up cool artifacts. Compete with other players in a free market scramble. Just remember to use the coupon code RIDLEY. That gives you twice the mining rate. Mine things dot com